We have a patient case study for Monday. Let's check it out. Good morning. Happy Monday. I have Neuro Coffee in hand and it is perfect. Busy, busy Monday. Um, I fast you folk. Uh, we have a live Q&A at 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, the link is on the website. If you're not signed up for iFastU, you better do it quickly, um, and we will see you early this afternoon. Last couple of Q and A's have been pretty killer, so so we've had a good time. Um, I'm going to dig right into Monday's Q and A because I got a dentist appointment today. Braces. Um, so this comes from Carmine, and Carmine has a case study for us. So this is going to be kind of fun. Um, he says, "I appreciate you sharing your model and the content you consistently put out. Well, you are most welcome, Carmine." Um, I have a client who often experiences right SI joint pain. He is biased towards a narrow ISA with a straight leg raise. So pay attention to these numbers, folks. Straight leg raise of 85 on the left, 75 on the right. Hip flexion on the right is 130, 110 on the left. He has about 30 degrees of IR on the left, 20 on the right. ER on the right, I'm sorry, ER on the left is 60, 50 on the right. What would be the orientation of the pelvis? And what do you believe is producing the pain experience on the right side with these measures? Would this be a pelvis tipped on an oblique axis to the right with an anterior posterior compression on the right? What activities would you recommend for this individual? What activities would I recommend? Well, Carmine, you can just send your consultation check to me and care of IFAST and we'll take care of that. Kidding. Let's go through this. Okay. So first and foremost, let's, let's, figure out why we would see this representation in the first place, Carmine. And so let me tell you what's going on here. You got somebody that's looking for right internal rotation. And so they're, they're orienting their body in a position as a substitute for the inability to internally rotate. So you're going to have to find internal rotation somewhere. We're going to go after the hip here because I think that's going to be the first place that if you recapture this, it'll be it'll be money. But let's let's break down what the pelvis looks like. So when in doubt, you always want to go back to your archetypes to start. So we got somebody that's going to be biased towards the, the narrow ISA. Okay, so we, we know we don't have normal extremity motion, so we don't have full breathing excursion. So we're going to have somebody that's going to be in our, our plastic model representation of that. Okay, so right away on the back side, we've got an outlet that is in a, in a position that's biased towards inhalation. We have a bias towards increased ER, decreased IR, which is what you, you're, you're kind of representing. Now, your hip ER measures kind of look like they're, they're in the normal run, but remember, we're biased towards the, the narrow ISA, so what we should get is a magnification of ER and a reduction of IR, but you're kind of sitting really, really close to normal, so that's gonna be indicative of the fact that you probably lost a little bit of that ER, so we got some, some anterior orientation that we're dealing with. Now, you are absolutely correct. Because of your ER measures, that's gonna be your tell as far as being tipped on this oblique, so we got a little bit of an oblique tilt going this way, um, and that's why you've got the deficit in your ER, okay? So we, so now we've got a representation of, of what we're looking at. So your key performance indicator is gonna be this right hip IR measure, but, but, you're gonna need to get the ER back first. Then we can superimpose the internal rotation on top of that. So we're gonna monitor ER first, but we're gonna go after this, this, this right hip IR. Now, you only gave me a partial chessboard, but I think we got enough to work with here. But let me offer you this, that if you complete your chessboard, you're gonna be a lot more clear on what you're gonna to need to do. Chances are this person's gonna have a limit, limitation in right hip um, abduction. You're gonna have limited hip extension on both sides. Um, and I would suggest um, that, you, that you do this in sideline. Don't use a Thomas test, hate the test. It's never been, been terribly useful. Um, Use your upper extremity measures as a confirmation. Remember, we've got iterations in the thorax. So just, just little hints here. Couple other things. You get some outlier measures here that are a little bit off. So your hip flexion and your straight, straight leg raise are, are a little bit magnified. Now that's not unusual for a narrow, but when we've got the right in, when we've got the anterior orientation around there, um, we want to be really, really careful about, about how, how we measure these things. So if there's one thing that I've evolved over the last, oh, five years or so is getting very, very particular about how we measure. So I got a, a couple of videos up on YouTube on shoulder flexion, hip flexion, on, on how to go about those things. Chances are you're getting a little bit of a roll 
on the table as you're doing these measures. So it's magnifying your straight leg raise a little bit. It's magnifying your hip flexion quite a bit. So you're getting some rollback on your hip flexion. So, so please pay attention to, to how you're doing that. Now, the cool thing is, is that you still got some, some deficit in your measures that are gonna point us in the right direction. Um, just make sure you're getting more reliable with yourself. Okay, so let's go through this stepwise. So we've got some anterior orientation, gotta take care of that first. Bringing that back is gonna help us recapture our, our external rotation measures. Now, just a quick reminder, because we're dealing with the narrow, if you try to reorient the, the, the pelvis, so we're gonna, we're gonna take the pelvis from an anterior orientation to posterior orientation, chances are you're gonna have somebody that's gonna try to clench that, that lower aspect of, of the, the posterior lower uh, part of the pelvis. They're gonna try to concentrate on that as they posteriorly orient. So what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna wanna induce a little bit of internal rotation with that. And because of, the, because of the orientation on the oblique axis, we have to push back into the left at the same time. So what we need is a right overcoming action on that right side. And so we're gonna drive right propulsion as we reorient the pelvis and try to kill two birds with one stone. So it's gonna look, uh, I, I like to put, put people in hook line and, and then um, drive the, the, uh, the right propulsive strategy uh, again at the, at the same time. So it should look like that. There we go. Um, now, that's, a, that's very rehabish. So what, ultimately what we want to be able to do is we want to get this person standing up and get them into a split squat with the right foot forward. Um, orientation to help push back into the left, but we might have to construct this. So again, you're dealing with somebody in pain, they may not be able to manage gravity all that well, but we can start to, to look at this thing um, from, from that perspective of the split squat, but we can put them on their left side. So, so we wanna be left side heavy under, under all of these circumstances. So you're gonna hear me say that a lot um, as, as we organize uh, the, the exercises here. So we put them in left side heavy and we start to put them in the split squat orientation so we can drive that that uh, right propulsive strategy and start to recapture uh, the, the hip rotations that we've lost. So as we drive that, that right propulsion, it's gonna help us push back into the left with the right side. We capture ER and then we lower them into the, the split squat orientation which is gonna capture, capture the IR. Okay, so again, start them on left side lying or, or as we would say, left side heavy, right foot pushing back. Now, so once we recapture our hip ER and IR on the table, we wanna go ahead and stand them up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have that same orientation, right foot forward, split squat orientation. We're gonna be pushing back into the left with that right side. We're gonna start with an ipsilaterally lo loaded split squat. What the ipsilateral load is gonna allow us to do, it's gonna make it easier for us to come out and maintain that ER orientation because if we lose the ER in that right hip, we have no place to superimpose our IR. Once you can consistently recapture your, your external rotation of that right hip, now we're gonna to move to the contralaterally loaded split squat, which is going to push us into the split squat in IR. So now we're gonna capture the IR there, and then we're gonna to have to push out against the resistance and maintain our ability to control the pelvis and hang on to our externally rotated position. You can also use a right front foot elevated right propulsive split squat. So, so here's a representation up here, should be if my technology is good. And what you're doing here is you're actually reaching forward with the right side. And so again, we're creating an overcoming action on the right side by biasing that right side lead. And what that does is it teaches us to go through the middle propulsive phase, hanging on to the ER, and then we can superimpose the IR on top of it. Once we can become more dynamic, we can shift to a like backward sled drag with a left handle only stepping back with the left foot only. So again, we're, it's teaching us to push backwards and to the left with that, with that right foot. Once we do that, we can move to playing in this middle propulsive area so we get normal middle propulsive capabilities. And so then the sled drag becomes the crossover sled drag because that's playing in middle propulsion all day, every day. We can go right suitcase carries um, to help us maintain some, some measure of IR. And then hopefully we can just restore all of our normal dynamics and then and, and build out variations from there. You might have to consistently apply a little bit of this 
in the early phases of training just to make sure that they're they're maintaining their their uh, capabilities of hanging on to that external rotation and pelvic orientation on the right side but in general this should be move you towards a solution so carmine i appreciate you asking this question it's a great case study as a representation but remember clean up your measures as much as you possibly can finish out your chest boards don't just look at these things as a, as a local diagnosis this is systemic it, it, it affects the entire body so you can use your upper extremity measures as confirmation of your of your lowers everybody have a terrific monday and i will see you tomorrow